NBA's next all-time great big three has been formed as James Harden's been traded to the Brooklyn Nets, if you hadn't heard, for young talents Karis LeVert and Jarrett Allen, plus four first-round picks. But the Rockets have already traded LeVert to the Indiana Pacers for Victor Oladipo, but this Harden deal all comes after James literally forced his way out of Houston with his teammates DeMarcus Cousins and John Wall rightfully clapping back at Harden in separate interviews, just a ton of drama, but now we're past all of it and it's time to obsess about this superstar trio that's popped up right before our eyes. There had been a ton of rumors about this for months as I had made a video back on November 17th titled Top 5 Major Trades Most Likely to Happen. Harden was in the thumbnail in a Nets jersey and as you can see from the comments, a lot of people were calling me crazy. But now we're past all the locker room drama and trade speculation because it's happened. Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving are on one team. Some will argue that the three ball-dominant players won't mesh on the floor all at once, but in taking that stance, here's what you're failing to realize. The Nets already had a guy like that in Karis LeVert who needs the ball to thrive. Now they have an MVP and a six-time All-NBA player in that spot next to KD and Irving, which gives Brooklyn an insane amount of shot creating on the perimeter. Additionally, Irving, Durant, and Harden are all extremely efficient spot-up guys. It's not like they're one-dimensional offensive players whose games can't mesh with one another. However, the biggest question for this Nets team will be can their egos coexist off the court? That hasn't been the problem with KD whatsoever. But I made a video about the Kyrie Irving problem a few weeks ago on a completely separate issue from what's going on right now with him. If you hadn't heard, recently Kyrie's been away from his team and out due to personal reasons for a few games. But you have to imagine that the Beard's arrival will force Irving to return to the team. I hope he does. Of course, I think the Nets came out very well in this trade, given the fact that they kept the floor spacer and a shooter who's producing very efficiently in Joe Harris. I'll get to that and much more, but if you're a Rockets fan, you have every right to be upset with Harden right now. We saw bombshells in the headlines one after another, and Harden get visibly out of shape which was likely in spite of not being traded. I know he wasn't willing to stick out the situation this year, and he did cause a ton of drama in the process, but this isn't only on him because James had demanded a trade and when a player who's given 9 plus years of MVP type production to your organization requests a trade and is ignored by the front office, you can expect all hell to break loose and that's exactly what went down in this scenario. So you can partly blame the new management in Houston for hanging on to James Harden too long, for James likely becoming the most hated player in basketball at the moment. I don't hate him, but I'm just saying he's the most hated player by a lot of fans right now. However, even with Harden's numbers going down this season, when this newly formed big three of the Beard, the Snake, and Uncle Drew get their chemistry right, and of course are in shape, the offensive firepower that this Nets team is going to have will be next next level elite. At their peak, Irving's going to be saucing up players on the perimeter with KD and Harden harmoniously spacing the floor for him. But this is where the first year head coach and former two-time MVP Steve Nash becomes valuable because he's going to have to manage the demand of the basketball from three of the top 15 players on the planet. Nash is going to have to map out his plays in a fashion that gets these three an equal amount of shots. To also work out the chemistry, one of Durant, Irving, and Harden are going to have to establish themselves as the number one option, the go-to guy, and two of them are going to have to take a step back, at least at times, to let the main guy go off. But if Brooklyn's trio wants to be amongst the all-time greatest big threes when their time together is all said and done, which could be very soon based off the recent highly changing patterns of the modern NBA, Kyrie and James are going to have to put their egos aside, which is a big ask based off what we've seen from Harden and Irving in their careers. But whether we see the same type of drama that's come out of Houston recently, or this big three becomes incredibly dominant on the court and turns Brooklyn into the title favorite, this is going to be insane to watch regardless. Just think of the defenses in the league that even have a chance of stopping this Team USA-esque super team. I can't wait for Harden's debut. I don't care if he's overweight right now, he's the greatest scorer of this generation, and now he's finally been blessed with the perfect situation for his talents to contribute to a championship. Before I see them play, it's too early for me to predict if this team's winning the 2021 finals or even getting through their conference. I just made a video the other day on the Boston Celtics and why they're built for the finals. 
they're going to be a tough task. Indiana's looking really good right now, and there's multiple other teams in the East that are threats. But I'll make a video predicting Brooklyn's potential if they look really good and show out in their first few games. Or if it's a disaster, I'll probably make a video on that too. But as I said, it's going to be insane regardless. I respond to every comment, so let me know your take on the Harden trade. Again, I can't wait for the debut because we've got another super team, folks. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops to stay updated and be friends. But this was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.